Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to change a twist lock plug. In the industry, this is kind of known as a farmer plug. A lot of farmers use these single phase or three phase, depending on your location, for running augers, things like that. They're really not built for that, but they sure do work good. This one, as you can see, is kind of burnt. There has been a lead that has basically been arced open or closed, however you want to say it, and the plug is no good anymore. I've lost my leg inside the plug. So we're going to go over how I do this. I'm not saying this is the right way. Make sure if you attempt something like this, you have a good understanding of electricity and that it will kill you. Down here, we have our male plug, as you can see. This is actually not in too bad a shape, but I don't have any more female plugs that match this corresponding lug like this. We do a lot of motor testing. We always have jump cords, is what we call them, laying around. And this is just a consumable in our shop. This is the corresponding end of our jump cord. We always have our wild leg or our 220 volt leg of our three phase marked clearly and it's always the red for our shop that way there's no confusion when we are hooking up a single phase motor i have two brand new leviton plugs we have a female and a male make sure they plug into each other before you start this project and because these are a consumable i bought extras for the shop their part numbers are corresponding 2713CS and a 2711CS. So these are a nice twist lock plug. We're going to go ahead, open this up. Of course, make sure your electric is off. We're going to open this up and get this removed. We have our twist lock female plug removed. This black lead here, which is a 110 lead, uh, is clearly the one that was burnt. You can see just a little bit of charring on the wire. Very well could have happened where this had loosened up just from years of use and them getting hot and cool, hot and cool. Sometimes they do loosen up. So we're easily gonna be able to reuse this. We'll go ahead and install our new female plug now. We have our new female plug installed, and I just wanted to quickly go over. Green, of course, is ground, and then I always go straight across to the plug. This would be our ground, then I come over here. This is our 220 lead, because we are low voltage three phase, and then this is our 110 lead, 110 lead, and then I always correspond directly across from the ground, the 220 lead, of course, and I always correspond that with the color red. We have our multimeter set up. I'm gonna go ahead and put our black lead in the ground side right here, it has the little notch. We're gonna jump straight across to our 220 side our shop always runs 210 to 211 volts. We go over to one side, we are at 123 volts. And we go over to the other, we are at 121. I'm reading that upside down, so I might have a little variance there. So we have confirmed that our new female plug is good to go, wired correctly, how we do it at our shop. We're going to remove our male plug. You can see this one is leg in right here for the ground, and this one is leg out. So this would have never worked. We'll go ahead, roll a time lapse of this. We have our male plug removed. We're gonna go ahead, open up 
our brand new mail plug. There we go, these two now separate, as you can see. Always slide this on first. I've done this more times than I can count. You get the plug all wired in, and then you realize you forgot to put the base on. Slide that down. I always twist my wires, make sure they're good and ready to receive the plug. Now, yet again, we are just going to do the same thing. Green is ground right here. It has the leg in right here. Then we go straight across for the 220 side, 110, 110. So just again, real quick, we have ground right here. We have 220 right here, 110 and 110. This will be a three phase, four prong plug. confirmed that our power is off so just in case I damage something I always try to test them make sure that they work properly these seat all the way in nice and tight and then you twist them hoping you can hear that click this is called a twist lock plug and then they will not unplug I'm trying to pull them apart right now so that all works well now we are going to confirm that our color coordinated wires are all still the same and make sure that this jump cord is now ready to be used. This is the most dangerous part of this job. We have a hot wire that is exposed. You can see that the other leads are wire capped. So we are going to put our ground wire into the black lead and we are going to touch the red lead to the wild leg. You can see that it is 220 volt. Now we're going to immediately shut down, unplug the cord, wire cap this, and test our next two. Again, we have an exposed electric lead. This is very dangerous. Make sure you have a good understanding of electricity. Do not try this at home, get an electrician. We put our black lead into the ground wire and we test to confirm that this is 110 volt. Again, we are low voltage three phase. Now we will turn the power off, disconnect the plug, wire cap this and test our white lead. We are going to test our final lead to confirm that it is 110 volt. Now everything has been tested to make sure that our wild leg stays our wild leg. We're going to go ahead and cap this, get this out of the bench vise. Of course I am using a bench vise here. This is a no-no because you could fray your insulation, but we always have to have our wild leg labeled so that we can test single phase motors that rely on 110 volt, 110 volt. I just wanted to do this video to get the information out there about this. I am not an electrician. You need to do this at your own risk. Just wanted to demonstrate how I do things. We're gonna hook this up to a three phase electric motor and give you a quick demonstration just to see everything running. Again, do this at your own risk. Know what you're doing, know what you're talking about so that you guys stay safe out there. That's always my goal. I just remembered that we are changing the seal on this large tumble mixer. So I'm going to go across the shop and hook up a electric motor that we need to test run anyway. As you can see, we do a ton of work with electric motors. These units are just going for resale for the main company I work at. This is a 25 horsepower, 
three phase unit, 230 volt, 460 volt. We are on 230 volt. We already have our jump leads hanging out of the motor box. So we can just hook up to this and get it running. We have our 25 horsepower motor all wired up. We have our ground wire attached, of course. We have our three leads hooked up. Three phase, it does not matter where your wild leg goes, just as long as you want the proper rotation. If the motor was turning the wrong direction, then you would just simply switch, let's say your white lead for your wild leg lead, and then the motor would turn the opposite direction. So we're gonna go ahead, get this fired up and test run it. While I am hooking up the leads to any motor or transformer, anything like that, I always have my jump cord unplugged. This gives me a double measure of safety. So we're gonna plug this in, fire up the motor, let you see it run, and then we'll wrap things up. Stand clear. As you can see, motor fired right up. Again, I am not an electrician. Make sure that you have a qualified person do your work for you. Just wanted to make this video showing how I test motors and how I had to change a plug because we use them so much that we wear them out. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you're new, and we'll see you next time.